You may feel like we've only covered the very basics and the start of C-sharp, but already you've learned quite a bit and it's important to remember those things. So this test is gonna to help to confirm and reiterate what you've now learned and to make sure that you remember that. So even though I've only shown you the basics of Visual Studio and C-sharp so far, from creating a project, adding a few lines of code and running that code, you will have actually learned quite a few things and it's important to remember those things and get them soaked into your mind as we progress through this course. The point of this test is to validate the learning and to make sure you have understood and remembered what you have learned. I will be live on Super Chat during these tests so that you can talk to me directly while the test is going on. Be honest and don't be afraid of getting things wrong. That's part of learning. If you do get questions wrong, I would advise going back until you get 100% on every test. You can watch the video as many times as you want until all the knowledge sinks in. So let's jump in with a few test questions from this first lesson and see how you do. So get ready for the first test question. Answer honestly and try not to cheat. You can always go back to the video if you don't get answers correctly. So let's begin. The first question is, what does ID stand for? Is it internal developer environment, integrated developing environment, or the integrated development environment? I'll give you a few seconds to think on this. Let me know your answer in the super chat, and then let's see who got it right. The answer is the integrated development environment. Let me know if you got that correctly, and let's move on to the next one. The next question is, what is this called? So this hello world item in the list here. We have the solution here, we've got dependencies and we've got a class file, but what is this called here? Have a few seconds to think and let me know in the chat and I'll let you know the answer. And it is of course called the project. A solution can have multiple projects and as your application grows, you'll get into situations where you have multiple projects. The third question is, what do you press to run your application? Is it Control C, F5, or Control and V? Again, think about this and let me know your answer. And the answer is F5. So this one may get a little bit more tricky unless you were paying close attention. What does exit code zero mean? Is it that your program exited with no information, your program exited successfully, or the program exited unexpectedly? Have a think on it, I did give you the answer. And the answer is that your program exited successfully. We'll do two more questions now, I think, and that should be enough. So the next question is, what happens when you press F5? Does your program run, your program build and run, or your program builds, runs, and is debuggable? Again, I did mention this. Let's see if you are all paying attention. Let me know what you think. The answer is, of course, your program builds, runs, and is debuggable. When you press F5, Visual Studio will first check if your program has changed, and if so, rebuilds it. Then it runs your application, and then it also attaches the debugger to the program. We'll cover this more in future lessons, but you can also run your application without the debugger attached. However, that is a different command. F5 is the most common command you will use to simply start your application to carry on developing. I've saved the hardest question till last, and only those of you that were paying close attention will get this one. The answer wasn't directly given by me, but if you were paying attention and listening to all the pieces of information given, you should get this one. So the question is, what is special about the function called main? Is it the only function that can be static and called main? Only one function can be called main. It is the only class that can be static. Now this is a tricky one and they're very similar. So I'll be very interested to see how many of you get this one right. And the answer is, only one function can be static and called main. So hopefully this test was useful and helped you solidify your knowledge of the lesson. 
If you got anything wrong, I'd go back and rewatch the lesson and let me know if these tests are useful to help you learn and understand things.